when you're able to let go of the same old toxic interaction you've always had with this person, I almost guarantee you'll never get into a relationship with that kind of person again, because you have learned how to empower yourself. Yeah, it's so easy to stumble into a codependent dynamic where mm -hmm. I put myself in a position to need you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's unhealthy to get into a relationship because I need you. Uh, I can take care of myself. I can meet my own needs. I am empowered. I'm with you because I want to be with you because right. I love you because you enhance and enrich my life. Not because right. I need you. All the love songs do it the wrong way. I, I need you. I can't live with. They're you. such lies. Yes. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't fall. For it. <laughs> I know. If you become empowered. What a great model for your kids. And they're not likely to marry someone like their narcissistic parent. So you really can't break a cycle, not just for you, but also for your children. Hey, this is Diane Dirks. And I'm Rick Boyles. We've been working with co-parents in conflict for more than two decades. We've taught classes, written books, counseled parents, empathized and agonized a few times to help people make sense of their complicated families. We were talking one day and it occurred to us that helping the most difficult cases comes down to one simple concept. Is one parent willing to let go of the tug of war rope or is it worth it to hold on and fight? So we invite you to take this journey with us each episode as we tackle the questions, should you hold on or let it go? Welcome to Co-Parent Dilemmas, where we give you practical solutions to those impossible co-parents. Hello, Rick. Hi, Diane. What's happening in your world? What's happening? Oh, I'm getting new windows to, nope, day after tomorrow. So tomorrow I have to take down all of my blinds and rearrange my office. Boring. I know, but <laughs> it's going to be nice to have really good win windows we yeah, have are just is. not insulated at all. It's Oh, good. Yeah, you need those. It's just one of those projects that you get the new windows and then you cover them up with blinds and it doesn't look <laughs> like you did anything. Right? No, the only evidence you have is your electric bill, hopefully, or your... is a little bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just had my son and his wife at my house over the weekend. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Good to see family. So today we have a um, email from Todd. He's from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and talks about his ex-wife being a narcissist. And I didn't know they had narcissists in Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheese repels I that was narcissists. Too far north to attract <laughs> narcissistic behavior. Oh, imagine yeah, the population would go up if <laughs> if they didn't have any narcissists. I know. I'm I'm teasing. Um, that's home of the Green Bay Packers, which my family is a huge Green Bay Packer fan. So really? Go Pack! Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I think my kids each have a share in the. Uh, franchise because Green Bay Packers is the only franchise that is owned by the fans. I did not know that. Yes. Isn't that's that cool? incredible. Yeah, that's way cool. Yeah. So we hear you, Todd. I hope you're a Green Bay Packer fan. I can't imagine that you would not be. Anyway, um, I'll just read his email here. It's kind of long, but I'm going to pare it down to what I think is important for us to address today. He said, hi, Diane and Rick. I've just started listening to your podcast and have a question for you. I've been divorced for almost three and a half years now. We have two children that we still are co-parenting and one will age out in June. Over the past year or so, my ex has stopped giving me updates on doctor appointments, bills, etc. I actually had a bill go to collections because she never told me about it. And she had the bills come to her house with my name on it. I finally got fed up and took her back to court over that. Um, along with the communication piece, my attorney wanted to evaluate uh, maintenance and child support payments. Long story short, the focus was on the financial issues and not really on the communication aspect. I wanted the court to order a, a parenting app, but they did not. Uh, I brought this up to my attorney. I'm kind of getting blown off about my ex communicating with me. Even today, one of the kids is home from school. I know this because of school notification, but she has not let me know that he's at home. I need an objective opinion. Should I keep hammering away at this communication piece to try to get this enforced or just let it go? 
My youngest is almost 15, so I have three more years of dealing with her. To be honest, I'm dealing with a narcissist in this case, so this isn't someone that is a decent human being. Thank you for any guidance that you can give. Love listening to the podcast. Keep up the great work. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot in there. Yes. It doesn't sound like it on the surface, but, you know, when you and I look through our lens, right, uh-huh. of, of many years of dealing with parents in these situations, um, what jumps out at you first, Rick? Well, I when you read it that time, what struck me was, should I hang on to it or let it go? And it those aren't the only two options, I think. I think there's there's something else here that we need to explore. Communication is very, very important. Uh, and especially with the narcissist, especially with a narcissist, because <laughs> you need to protect yourself, not only from the narcissist, but also from the court. Because if you shut down communication, the courts don't like that. They, that it, so I put up a really strong boundary against this narcissist to protect myself. Now the courts are upset with me and I'm exposed. But if I just keep communication open, then the narcissist I'm not protected from. So yeah. we need to find a way to do both. How can I keep that, yeah, open communication the, but protect myself from That's a that double narcissist. bind we always talk about. Damned right. if I do, damned if I don't. If I try to co-parent with them, I'm abused. <laughs> if I don't co-parent with them at all, I get scolded by the court. So Right. Yeah. Um the concern he has that his child is home from school today and she hasn't told him that's not uncommon unless your court order tells you, you have to let the other parent know if your child misses school, usually court orders say if there's an emergency health emergency or otherwise, you have to let the other parent know Um, staying home from school doesn't constitute an emergency necessarily. So I'm not too worried about that, but To me, this is one of those cases where this is just one in a many, one in many of offenses (laughs) that he gets annoyed with her, that she would be a cooperative co-parent. That would be something he would do for her, right? Right. It would be a courtesy I would give her. Why am I not getting this courtesy in return? And one of the things we always say is stop asking why questions you already know the answer to. Yeah. Why is he not getting that courtesy in return, Rick? Because she doesn't care whether he has it or not. And maybe she gets a kick out of making him frustrated. Yeah. Todd, you already answered your question. You said, this isn't someone who's a decent human being. (laughs) Right. You know the answer. Stop asking, why doesn't she give me the same courtesy that I would give her? Yep. So let's not ask why questions when we've already answered the question. The question is I'm not dealing with a decent human being, at least from your perspective. I don't know if she's decent or not, but you don't seem to think so. So it's not a mystery or it's not something I want you to lay awake at night thinking about why, 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 why won't she just be like me? But one of the misnomers I, that I think might be lurking here is that if I can get the court to uh, order some, method or process for communication, then it will force her to tell me things I want to know. And that's, that's not true. Just because the court tells her she's supposed to doesn't mean she will. And then I would question, why do you need all of that information? If it's her parenting time, I I can understand that. Okay. If the child's sick and home from school, knowing that the child's sick is probably important, but whether they're just home from school, maybe not. And, you know, having the medical bill go to collections. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But now, you know, now, you know, yeah, go. So you could trust her with that and you can't. So what is the plan B here to get what he needs? The plan B is not to keep asking her for it. That's plan A. And she keeps shutting it down. (laughs) Right. Plan B that you don't have to ask permission for is I need to communicate with the doctor's offices and make sure I'm getting all the bills to my address directly. You, yes. Yeah. You have to be more proactive because she's not going to be. So sometimes we have to learn the hard way when you think, well, this is what a decent human being would do, <laughs> even though you've now said she's not a decent human being. So how do you get around something when someone's not going to do the right thing? You 
communicate with the doctor's offices when you know they go, whoever they are, and just say, either send me a copy of the same bill to this address or email it to me or something. Otherwise, I don't want these to go in collections. And I guarantee you the doctor's office doesn't want it to go in collections either. Absolutely. So they will Motivated. be happy yes. to bill you if they think that you might be willing to pay. Um, the other thing I think Rick is the youngest is 15. Yeah. How does that, how does that help him decide what to do? And and he says she's 15, so I have three years to deal with her. Well, that's the wrong perspective. Uh, you, actually, you're always going to have to deal with her for the rest of your life because that 15-year-old's probably going to get married one day. And guess who's going to show up at the wedding? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, think of it more like uh, I, just three more years that she you're co-parenting with her, but you still have three years with this daughter. Focus on that yeah. daughter. Sure. Yeah, don't spend your time and money. And again, we're not attorneys. So, you know, we're assuming you're talking to an attorney, but from a mental health perspective, yeah, spending your time and money on a court case to try to get this person who's not a decent human being to become more decent is probably a lose-lose prospect right. in many different ways. And doing what you need to do in helping your daughter launch in the next few years is going to be vitally important. So focus more on that. Spend your money elsewhere. Uh, gee, spend it on her college fund, right? <laughs> Instead of right. on your attorney's child's college fund. <laughs> right? Spend them on dinner with your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he has a valid point. In the meantime, how do I communicate? And this is where I think I want to take the rest of this episode is a parenting app is nice, and there are many out there that courts order a specific app that you can email through, and they have all kinds of bells and whistles, and it's nice to have a parenting app where you can see when the other person has read your email or there's a central place to upload all the medical bills or documents that are important to your children. There's all kinds of things that that can do, but that is not mutually exclusive to the email protocol we talk about. Those are two different things. Right. There's no parenting app out there that's going to limit how much you communicate with each other. So people still can harass one another through the parenting app, especially narcissists. Yes. And I know some of them have tone meters and does that mean they're going to listen? You can still override the tone meter, right? Oh, I can I can make you very frustrated with very polite words, too. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's what gaslighting is all about, right? Yes. You're the crazy one, not me. Look how nice my communication was. Yep. So we suggest that you adopt the email protocol, which can be used in any app. It can be used with whatever email provider you have, because the email protocol is a method of frequency and format Yes, of communicating. Structure, yep. And the beauty of it, just like the plan B that we just had that class on last week and that we continue to talk about, plan A is you both executing the parenting plan with good communication. That's plan A. That's what the court hopes you'll do. That's what cooperative parents do. It's what parallel parents do who can't really cooperate well, but they have a parenting plan and they stick with it. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, it oftentimes they don't care to execute the parenting plan because <laughs> they just think they're above the law, right? Right. So you can put anything in a parenting plan, but that doesn't guarantee that the narcissistic co-parent will do what the judge says, do what the court says, do what the order says. So you really have to take matters into your own hands. And the beauty of it is you don't need a parenting app to do the email protocol and you don't need her permission to do it. You just do it on your end and it will frustrate the heck out of her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is getting Todd some peace. And that's what so it you, does. So, yes. so you explain to her the way to do this is you explain to her hey, I discovered this new email protocol that I think would be good for us to use. I'm going to use it. Here's, you know, attach a copy of it. How it you works. Yep. Look at our show notes and find a copy of it. And I'm going to start doing this this coming Sunday at nine. Would love for you to participate. She's not going to do that if she's a narcissist. 
If she does do it, Todd, maybe you're wrong and she's not a narcissist. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, it's possible. Possible. But if she is the person you say she is, she's not going to like that and she's going to ignore that. She's still going to text you on Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> telling you what the problem you are. Or if she's the opposite, she'll just ghost you, right? Like some narcissists do until they feel like they need somebody to a punching bag to punch on. So you send out your FYI and your RRs knowing that you probably won't get an answer. But that's okay. Um, you're, you have a 15-year-old. The beauty of your situation is that most things you need to know, you can find out through your 15-year-old, right? Because they'll either tell you spontaneously or it's okay to ask them, hey, do you got homework tonight? Or, hey, when, when is that thing at school? Can You know, they're, you know, they're 15. Right. They're, you need to start teaching them, then know things, <laughs> Uh -huh. especially things they want you to come to. So you have more power now than you did before to learn what you need to learn because you're able to communicate with your teenager. Now I'm not, that's different from putting them in the middle and telling them, go tell your mom this or ask your mom that I'm not suggesting that, but you know, Hey, I, I know your game got rained out. Do you know what day it is? <laughs> and they can usually tell you. So that's okay to be able to communicate those vital things with your teenager. Um, and what will happen is you'll get nothing maybe, or she'll say, I'm not going to do that. That's ridiculous. Okay. Thank you. But I've decided it's better for me to communicate this way. Right. And then next Sunday, same time you do it again and you do it the next Sunday and I've had parents where the other parent says, stop sending me these weird emails every week that have the FYI and RR. I don't want those anymore. Right. <laughs> and you ignore that and you keep doing it because if you do end up in court, you want the court to see you were not blocking communication. Right. You were not withholding information. In fact, you were asking questions, never getting the answers to them. <laughs> and you had to go around and get the answers yourself, which is fine but you didn't engage in conflict with her. And I know that's not what you want. You want some document to demand that she be a decent human being, but Yikes. there's no such document that no, exists. No, not enough it's ink. Not, it's not possible. Nope. So we would encourage you to do that. And when she texts you about something on Wednesday, you can say, I received your text. If it's not an emergency, when you decide, if it's an easy answer, you decide only, you know, your ex, Hey, what time is the game tonight? And you say five o'clock. And then she texts you 14 more times. And in those texts takes the opportunity to tell you what a creep you are. Then you learn a lesson. <laughs> I can't even answer the text that says what time is the game because it always leads to something else. So you decide how much of that you want to get into. But we always say, tell them, thank you for texting me. I will address this in my email on Sunday night. And then you copy and paste that somewhere in your phone so that you don't even have to think about it, right? Just copy and paste. Thank you for your email, I'm keeping track of them and we'll address them all on Sunday night. That is not ghosting them. That's not leaving them wondering whether you got the email. That's kind of telling them this is the boundary I've set for myself and I'm going to operate this way. I, we've had, Rick and I both have had more people like thank us for oh, yes. the ability to set a boundary that they don't like, but the court sees as reasonable mm -hmm. and it relieves you from this daily. And, and I don't know how long Todd has been divorced, but let's say he's been divorced 10 years, 10 years with a narcissist as a co-parent is a daily annoyance. Oh, <laughs> it just my. is. If you're not wow. hearing from them, you are afraid you are. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Any minute. You know, people, Shoes yeah. gonna drop. Yep. Wake up every day and go, okay, what is he or she gonna do today? Say today, tell my kid today, say to me, say to somebody else about me every single day. And there's something about you taking control of that that allows you to be in control of the communication that allows you to live your life 
Monday through Saturday <laughs> without having to think about what do I say now or how do I respond to that? It really puts you on the offensive. You are Aaron Rodgers. You know who that is, Rick? I do not. You don't watch football. No. <laughs> Quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Oh. Uh, who I nope. think is leaving and going to the Jets. Oh. Boo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you want to be on, you want to be the one throwing the ball. You don't want to always be on the defense and narcissists have a wonderful way of keeping us on the defense Yeah, by how they behave and act and you never know what they're going to do. And they love that. So this is a way to be on the offense. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey everyone. This is Chris from the financial philosophers podcast. And I'd like to invite you to come check out our show. We explore the nuances of personal finance on topics that are both simple and complex. Rather than regurgitating the same financial rules of thumb you've heard over and over again, we do a deep dive with real-life examples about compelling and relatable financial topics. I guarantee you will walk away with something new you didn't know before. Come nerd out with us, and let's take this financial journey together. And there's there's an art side to this. Uh, you, you look at the email protocol in the show notes and how it is structured and the guidelines for following it. And then that moment where you you get a text that asks a question and it's outside the protocol. I've had some parents just be really, really strict on the science side and say, nope, 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 nope. But a consequence of that is now the child's life is stressed out. Sure. Yeah. So you, you really have the art side of this is asking myself, will it make my child's life better if I provide an answer to this? Right. Um, if it doesn't make your child's life better, then you know, do the, I'll be glad to answer this. Do the mantra. Sure. I'll be glad to answer so this. On that's Sunday. a good point, Rick. I'm glad you brought that up. So it's, Wednesday at three, mom is driving to the dentist for a three thirty appointment with your child. She texts you and says, I think I have the address wrong for the dentist. We're on our way because it's a new dentist or whatever. And you get frustrated and go, Oh my gosh, I have to tell her everything because you know, <laughs> she should know the address to the dentist by now. We've had 14 emails about this. <laughs> So if you decide I'm not going to answer that or I'm going to pretend I didn't get it or I'm going to say, I'll answer that in our Sunday night email. Right. What you're saying, Rick, is your poor nine-year-old is sitting in the front seat of the car on the way to the dentist. Mom hangs up and goes, or mom looks at her text and goes, well, I guess we're not going to the dentist today because your dad won't tell me the address. Right. <sighs> and the child sighs. And says what? What does the child say to himself, Rick? Nobody is going to take care of me. Yeah. What Nobody's about paying me? attention. You're right, exactly. What about me? So what you're saying is that um, it would make sense for you to shoot off a text with the dentist email. And then if she uses, I mean, not email, address, if she uses that opportunity to communicate with you further, yeah. You can either not respond or just say, we'll talk about that in the Sunday night email. We don't need to talk about that right now Yeah, kind of thing. So, yeah. So we're telling you, use your brain. Think of your child's immediate need before you follow all these black and white rules because family life is never black and white. No. <laughs> yeah. You have to shift your thinking and say, what is what are the consequences to my child if this isn't addressed? Because then mm -hmm. their stress levels go up and that sure. hurts them emotionally and mentally. Right. Very similar to the scenario we've used before where there's something in the parenting plan that says the dad can't come to the mom's home without pre-notification Mm. Because they've had a history of a lot of conflict in front of the kids, but then dad violates that. And instead of mom just giving him the medicine that he stopped by to get, they get into a big fight. The police get called. The kids are sitting in the car. 
traumatized by the police being there and all of that stuff. When really, if mom would have thought about the children, even though dad violated the court order, she could have given him what he needed for the sake of the children, got him out of the driveway and yeah. then went and called the attorney and said, okay, this is the fourth time he's violated the court order. We probably need to do something. That's an example where you have a choice at one point. Am I going to react out of my anger or am I going to react out of what my kids need right now to protect them emotionally and then deal with my anger later. Dealing with it later does not change the outcome. It actually prevents a lot of drama that hurt the kids. Mm -hmm. People think if I don't deal with this right now, he's going to continue to abuse me or she's going to continue to walk all over me. But sometimes dealing with it right now can be very hurtful to the children. It's better to acquiesce in the moment and deal with the consequences later. Yeah. And that's just a hard lesson for a lot of people to learn. You almost have to learn it the hard way and then go back and, man, I wish I would have handled that differently. Oh, you know, my yes. anger get the, the best right. of me. And then I wasn't thinking about the kids. And now all hell is broke loose and I've got to pay $10,000 to my attorney to fix it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. thinking thinking through this stuff, the you have a whole history of uh, abuse or boundary violation or getting run over that yeah. that fuels that answer that you wish maybe I'd done differently. Yeah. Yep. So Todd wants an objective opinion. Should I keep hammering away at this communication piece to try to get this enforced or just let it go? And you said in the beginning, it's not always one or the other. We're not saying let go of the communication piece. We're right. saying think of it differently. Yes. Think of the court not being able to help you. But how do I set a boundary about the way I'm choosing to communicate so that regardless of what she does, I'm still doing my part? I want to add one one thing to that. I got an email from one of my clients not too long ago that one of the most valuable lessons I learned from you was – Stop being dependent on them for information. Yeah. And I opened up relationships with teachers and doctors and other parents and coaches and um, their friends' parents to find a network of information. And that has freed me up so much because yeah. I, before that, I kept depending on him and expecting him to give me the information. So I would say, let go that you're, she's ever going to treat you like a decent human being. She's never yeah. going to give you the information like a decent co-parent would. Yeah. So create that network of resources yourself and sure. get free and of then her. You, then you have the ability when the narcissist is trying to get one over on you and you try to get information and they ignore, ignore, ignore until the last minute when they know you can't do what you need to do, right? The power that you have when you're able to finally write back and say, oh, no problem. I already got it somewhere else. Right. Really grates on them, right? Yes. <laughs> kind of like, what? You mean you weren't dependent on me? I'm right. I make him more dependent on me, you know? <laughs> So you, you were able to navigate your world and get what you need for your child through other means that don't include the other parent. And that is a really empowering feeling. It's fine. I've got this figured out. I'm not, don't need you after all. Yeah. That's really hard for a narcissist to hear, but even narcissists will focus their efforts on places where they can get the most attention. <laughs> so you may find miraculously or not, depending on how relentless they are, that after doing the protocol for so many weeks, they, you, the, the reward has been taken away for them. Because by by being on the defensive, it was like you were giving them 50 bucks a week, you know, <laughs> your communication. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, she just he just keeps playing right into my hand. This is awesome. I love this reward. Yeah. And when you take away their power a little bit and they no longer feel rewarded, they're, they'll they possibly start focusing on another individual somewhere. We just hope it's not your child because sometimes they do that, you know, because they know that's the only way to hurt you indirectly is to start doing this kind of craziness with the child. And that's why you have to learn how to do it. So someday you can instruct your child how to set the right boundaries with their own parent. Yeah, we teach in the class that we do that 
pretend or consider the possibility that the other parent falls off the face of the earth and you do not, cannot have access to them, what would you do? Well, you'd yeah. find the information somewhere else. You would yeah. figure out something else to do. Yeah. So just start living that way now. Yeah. And the weekly email allows you to still show respect for the co-parent relationship, right? Yes. Without feeling like I've got to respect necessarily his or her behavior or enable or personality or enable it. Right. 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 Cause it may, because it feels like, Ooh, they're winning. If I feel like I'm enabling. Yeah. But no right. shift that focus to your child. You're making your child's life so much better because a you're free from all that stress, which enables you to be the best possible parent your child needs and deserves. Yeah. And there's a bonus if you do this well, I don't know if Todd is remarried, he didn't say, but when you're able to let go of the same old toxic interaction you've always had with this person and take some power over it, I almost guarantee you'll never get into a relationship with that kind of person again, because you have learned how to empower yourself and you you don't need to be a parasite anymore right? <laughs> and live off their energy. You have your own energy and um, you'll probably choose healthier the next time mm -hmm. because you will recognize that parasitic behavior <laughs> quickly and hopefully go, no, I'm not signing up for that again. But no. if you don't resolve that, you will probably do a little bit of a repeat because you haven't resolved that I need to have my own power. Yeah. Thrive, of, thrive on somebody else's. Yeah. It's, it's so easy to stumble into a codependent dynamic where mm -hmm. I put myself in a position to need you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we don't, we shouldn't get into, it's unhealthy to get into a relationship because I need you. Uh, I, I can take care of myself. I can meet my own needs. I am empowered. I'm with you because I want to be with you because right. I love you because you enhance and enrich my life. Not because right. I need you. All the love songs do it the wrong way. I, I need you. I can't live with They're you. such lies. Yes. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't fall. For it. <laughs> I know. And think about that. If you get it right yourself and become empowered, what a great model for your kids. Absolutely. And yes. then they're not likely to marry someone like their narcissistic parent. Mm -hmm. you know? So it, you really can't break a cycle, not just for you, but also for your children Yep. by doing this well. So, well, good question. Thank you, Todd, for writing in. And I hope that was helpful. And go pack. <laughs> go pack. <laughs> go Todd. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. The information contained in this podcast is generic. It must not be misconstrued as constituting legal or psychological advice. Decisions relevant to any specific individual, family system, or case require the direct evaluation of skilled, child-centered professionals. <laughs>